Hi YouTube, Brian James, I'm Micro Four Thirds Guy with you once again for a chat. I haven't done a, couple of, a chat for a couple of weeks. I don't know why, it's just been so busy. I've had my granddaughter staying with me and um, that's been hard work. Four years old, nearly four and a half years old. I'm too old for this. Getting, I'm going to be 60 at the end of this month and a four year old in my care is... Um, interesting anyway we've had fun and games with that and uh, been doing lots of bits and pieces done a couple of uh, lens reviews just did one the other day and there'll be one coming out early this week coming so watch out for that but i um i had a conversation i did a, a review on my um omd em1 mark one a couple of weeks ago which got some really really good comments thank you very much to everybody for the comments if you have left some of the comments i tried to read them all most of them are really really good there's one or two which are a little bit iffy but you always get that but um by and large i've, I've had some really really good comments back from people some which have been very uh, complimentary some of which have been very thought-provoking and i really quite like the thought-provoking ones um, because usually the thought-provoking ones are the ones where people have given a little bit of consideration as to what they're saying themselves uh, it hasn't just been a slagging fest, but they've made me think sometimes of different um, viewpoints on the same subject. Because, uh, as I've said many times in this, I don't consider me, myself to be the, the font of all knowledge. I'm very much um, experience-based, so um, sometimes the experience that I've had doesn't necessarily lead me down the path that everybody else has gone. And um, I've had some really interesting comments for that. Now... A few of those comments on that video was to do with the, the, the megapixel count, the 16 megapixels and the fact that the Mark II and III are both 20.3 20 20 or 20.1, I can never remember off the top of my head, megapixels. And also the fact that I'd made a comment in a previous video about the future of Micro Four Thirds, about the fact that we may be looking up towards 30 or even 33 megapixels for the, for the upcoming cameras. And there's a big debate. It's not just Micro Four Thirds. It's across the whole of the digital camera world, whether you're you're shooting on um, APS-C or full frame or whatever it is, there is a big debate about pixel count. And the technology is changing. We've now got, you know, 70, 80 megapixel cameras quite comfortably working. Um, and the, the way that sensors with uh, dual gain sensors and um, different sensor technology is coming in. Uh, and also the, the way that processors will process the signals and the, the speed that we can actually uh, alter the the uh, the storage the data storage that we get from those um, sensors a few years ago you couldn't get the data off the sensor fast enough to ha to have rapid shooting and high megapixel now you can but it did prompt um, one particular comment and it was a, a, a guy um, I can't remember his name let's have a little look down the Voyager if you're watching the Voyager thank you very much for your comment because it really stopped me in my tracks and made me think and uh, I read what you said and it was an interesting viewpoint on that the majority of photographers don't print the vast majority of photographers don't do print some do and even if they're doing prints they're not doing large prints they're not necessarily doing large-scale prints and a lot of what we are doing is literally seen on a screen now if we're really lucky on having you know the, the money to spend on say uh, an iMac where you've got maybe a, a 5K screen resolution or even 8K screen or something of that sort of ilk. They're big resolutions. But if we were to take something um, like a, a, a 1080p video, for instance, if you were to shoot something at 1080p, you've got a 2 megapixel display. And we're putting that onto 48, 50, 60 inch TV sometimes. Even at um, four, uh, in the 4K, you know, we are still putting that onto a screen which is far, far bigger than any of us would print. And we're perfectly happy with it. We think it's fantastic, the resolution that we get on that on a TV screen. If you put that on computer screens, we've got a lot more density on that. But we're still talking about the actual megapixel count that you can see on the screen being considerably less than we have in the camera. And that prompted uh, a discussion between uh, a few colleagues, uh, the Voyager's question uh, point made a, a discussion between a few of my colleagues on this the 16 megapixels that i got from the em1 mark one cost me about 300 350 pounds now in fact it was, it was less than that it was it was under 300 pounds if i remember on the video um if we can compare that to say a second hand em1 mark two we're still spending about 600 pounds 550 to 600 pounds for a good one of them 
and we're getting four megapixel extra usable on the sensor for that. Is it worth that amount of difference? Now, I do know obviously that there are differences in so far as the features and the facilities, the autofocus is improved on all those. But if you were to take two cameras of the same sort of ilk, if you were to take two cameras of a similar sort of um, specification in so far as its technical specification, its features, and you were to compare them purely on megapixel count, would you be wanting to spend two, three hundred pounds, four hundred pounds even more to get something which is going to give you four K extra, uh, four megapixel extra on your resolution on the camera? Yes, you can digitally zoom in slightly better, but how much of us, how many of us really go to town on that? And people say, well, well you know, if you zoom in into 100% or 200% on this, and you see the big difference, well, yeah, but if you're looking at a photograph, why are you zooming into 100% or 200% just to look at the photograph? Unless you're pic deliberately pixel peeping. You know, to me, when I get a finished photograph, I look at the image. I don't look at necessarily the, the, the pixels. Um, so... Again, if I've got something which has given me a, a lower megapixel count, is it worth that difference in money to get that little bit of extra around it? That really is, is something for me uh, to consider. But also, I was watching a great little thing from DP Review. It, it, it's, it's just come out today. I like the guys at DP Review. They talk a lot of common sense. And they've got the, the, the two sides, the stills and the video side, that they really go to town on. And they're talking about the difference with the Sony cameras between the... Uh, the 12 megapixel of the um, A7S, I think it's the A7S 3 or 4, whatever model it is, and the R, which is 61 megapixel. And going into the differences on that, because the perception is very much that you get a better low noise image from um, a lower megapixel because you've got bigger landing zones, if you like, bigger, bigger individual pixels in comparison to the higher megapixel. And what they did on that, it's, it's worth having a look at the video. It's literally been released today, so go and find it online, DP Review. Um, the conclusions that they got were interesting, but they were also doing it on prints, and fairly large prints, to see the differences. Um, so I would say that, you know, if you start looking at what the differences in these cameras are, is it necessarily going to give you a big advantage to spend a huge amount more money just for a slightly bigger megapixel count? I personally don't believe it is. I've got some fantastic shots from my AM1 Mark I, which is 16 megapixels, and it does absolutely superb. In fact, one of the best pro cameras I ever used was when I was shooting in Canon days. I had a, a 1D Mark III. Now, that was 10 megapixels on that. Uh, it's a sports camera, which meant that you could really read the sensor really quickly. It also meant that you know your refresh rate was shooting 10 frames a second at that time, which in those days was almost unheard of at that sort of speed. So... I shot that, but I was actually using it originally for portrait shooting, and I got some fantastic results out and some fairly big prints from it. So I think an awful lot is hype. I do think an awful lot we're doing uh, megapixel count is hype, and I'm interested to see what you think. Do, you know, drop me some comments below because, uh, as I say, I, I don't profess to be a sage on everything. It's it, this is what I what I perceive from what I shoot and what I hear other people talk about. But I'm not necessarily a great believer that big megapixel count is going to be worth the difference in money. And if it's purely the difference on that, if you're looking at the difference between, say, an AM1 Mark II and an AM1 Mark III, you're talking about, um, what, £1,300, £1,400 UK for an AM1 Mark III uh, with the same megapixel count, the same sensor density. Um, you know, So it's purely on the features that you're getting the advantages on that one. Is it going to make a big difference with having a new sensor? Is it going to make a big difference with having um, a bigger megapixel count? Or would you rather have a sensor which has got the same megapixel count, but which is going to have, say, far better low light capabilities? And is, a, is, it, is it going to actually give, give you an advantage just because you've got less megapixels? Or is it the technology around it, the processor, the, the way that we handle the storage, the, the, write, the read and write rate, the shape of those uh, landing zones for the light to go onto it? There's an awful lot into there. Um, dual gain sensors rather than uh, single gain sensors. All these sort of bits and pieces and new sensor technology and the way that it's read. Is it worth actually sacrificing some of the that megapixel count to get better facilities on that? The world, it's up to you. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I'm really interested here because to me it's something which doesn't float my boat particularly getting a super high megapixel count. Um, 
but I am interested in seeing what you what you do and and how a, a high megapixel count really affects your photography if it does, or if you just naturally assume that it's going to affect your photography, but in reality it hasn't. Let me know in the comments below, um, but make it open for everyone because uh, it's very much a discussion, I think, in the community that we have, which is a really good discussion to have. Once again, this is Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a quick thumbs up to like it. Um, if you want to leave me a little donation for a cup of coffee, I'm outside my favourite coffee shop at the moment, uh, leave me a, uh, there's a PayPal link below. But whatever you do, keep on taking your camera out, however many megapixels it's got. Keep on taking your photographs. And the most important thing, keep it enjoying your photography. See you soon. Bye-bye.